Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. Your top story is coming up on this Monday. It is February 1st. We hope you had an awesome weekend. I was just thinking about our opening topic today, and that is what happens to all those things we return at stores, particularly at places like Amazon online. I know, so there is a process apparently. Um, and this uh, article here on CNN gives an example about returning an air fryer. So it says, let's say you return it for some reason. So you send it back for free, no questions asked. So the retailer pays for the shipping costs and is already losing money. Immediately, the hourglass of profit turns, each grain of sand a few cents dropping for the original price of that air fryer. Once you, it uh, arrives at its destination, employee needs to open it, inspect it, maybe plug it in. This costs the retailer time and money, not to mention the box was open. So putting this back on the shelf with other brand new air fryers is out of the question. So it says, in short, receiving and handling a return isn't simple in the slightest. And for a number of items, big retailers like Walmart, Target, and Amazon do not want to bother with it. Yeah, despite conventional thinking, returns often don't end up back on the shelf, according to the CEO of 888 Lots, a liquidation company based in Jersey. He's like, customers really believe that the product just goes back into the black hole or ends up being resold to another customer's brand new. In many instances, he says that is not the case. No, he says they end up in liquidation warehouses in many cases and that this year that uh, he just might get a record number as the pandemic shuttered doors and shoppers increasingly turned to online retailers. Yeah, so what this goes on to say basically is that there are companies now that are buying huge boxes of returns right. from places like Amazon. And what they do is they, they get them to a warehouse, they sort them out like uh, Amazon Echoes over there and kids' toys over here, over here and Halloween costumes over there. And they box all those up and then they sell them to other retailers or even some of the outlet stores. Yeah, like uh, example they gave here was like Macy's Backstage. Mm -hmm. I noticed that coming into the store actually before the pandemic. Right. So I'm sure that's being used a lot more now. But they're, they're saying they're hoping this cycle can continue because up to 25% or so of returns actually wind up getting trashed. They send them right, almost right to the landfill. So and I, and I can see that. I think I gave a, uh, an example, I think earlier this year when I returned or I was trying to return some frames that I got from Amazon that arrived broken and they're like, just keep them. Yeah, <laughs> so just I keep was them. like, okay, I'll trash them for you. No problem. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> but I, I did. I did wonder where some of these wind up. And it sounds like in a lot of ways, they're trying to find a resale market for them. And, and there's clearly a market for resale items out there. All right. And we'll keep looking <laughs> For now, let's look at today's 9 at 9. Former President Donald Trump's office has named two new defense attorneys the day after his five-member legal team left the impeachment case. David Schoen and Bruce Castor Jr. will now head the legal team for his second impeachment trial. It is scheduled to begin next week. President Biden is set to meet today with a group of 10 Republican senators who have proposed spending about one third of the $1.9 trillion he is wanting in coronavirus aid. The House and Senate are on track to vote as soon as this week on a budget resolution. Homeland Security says the TSA now has the authority to enforce President Biden's mask mandate for passengers. Masks need to at least have two or more layers of breathable fabric and fit snugly. Scarves and bandanas are not allowed. Violations could be met with criminal penalties. Wall Street is getting ready for another clash between retail investors and short sellers after the run-up in stock prices for companies like GameStop and AMC. Online messages have urged buyers to get into silver. Both silver and gold prices have jumped as a result. Chief executives of both Exxon and Chevron are in preliminary talks about a possible merger. If the companies do merge, it would become the world's second biggest oil company behind Saudi Arabia's Aramco. A powerful winter storm is expected to bring up to 10 inches of snow in some areas in the northeast, including the nation's capital. Strong winds, ice and sleet are causing concern and will reduce visibility and create power outages. Toys R Us closing its remaining U.S. stores permanently because of the pandemic. The company says the Toys R Us website remains operational and more than 700 stores outside the U.S. are still open. Netflix is trying out a new sleep timer on your phone. It automatically shuts down streaming at your desired cutoff time. It's currently being tested on Android phones. 
2020 was the best year for distillers in four decades. Alcohol executives say people stuck at home splurged on more expensive booze, pushing overall revenues for U.S. distillers up by nearly 8%. And that's today's Nine at Nine. People drinking more during the pandemic. They're just <laughs> going top shelf this time. That's right. I guess, uh, well, you know, I guess in a way it might make sense. You know, people th are thinking, well, I'm not going out spending money for parking or whatever. So let me spend my money here. I've been at a liquor store now and then during the pandemic, and they're busy places these days. Yeah, I can imagine. A good sales for those people, at least. Right? Somebody's thriving. That's true. <laughs> Outside with Fly Camp, it's a beautiful start to our Monday. Uh, brand new month. Happy February to you, Justin. Thank you very much. Right back at you. It is a beautiful start. We've got clear skies out there right now. We're going to see clear skies today. Really comfortable temperatures. February is going to start off on a great note. We may get a couple fronts later in the week, but the uh, next three days look really pretty good. 51 degrees right now. Northerly winds 13 miles per hour. There was a bit of a wind chill earlier, not so much anymore. Dew point is way down there at 30. We're going to get those temperatures up into the mid 60s a little bit later today with uh, mostly sunny, if not sunny skies. Uh, right now, temperatures are actually lows this morning. I do want to look at that. We got down to 45 here in San Antonio, so not that cold, but we did get uh, close to freezing Kerrville down below freezing. Fredericksburg. Everyone else was in the 30s and 40s this morning. Uh, right now we have warmed up to 51 here in San Antonio. 47 Boulevardy, 44 Comfort, 50 in Tarplane. Once again, your forecast calls for sunny skies. 66 your high temperature. Northerly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Big storm system up across the northeast, dumping a lot of snow. I'll let you know if that's bringing any travel delays to parts of the country. Coming up here in just a bit, guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look out at TransSky there at I-37 in Houston, looking at the dome and looking at traffic uh, running pretty smoothly right now. This morning, police and Crime Stoppers looking for the person responsible for an aggravated, ro aggravated robbery rather at a Cash America Pawn Store. It happened back on December 28, 11 a.m. in the 6500 block of San Pedro. Police say the man walked into the store demanding money and property from the victims. Police say he was armed and left the scene in a white sedan. If you have any information that can lead to an arrest in this case, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Top stories for following today. Police investigating after a man was killed in a hit and run crash in a parking lot of an east side apartment complex early this morning. Police tell us they found the victim lying on the ground with a tire track across his body. It happened around 430 this morning at the Ivy Apartments in the 4500 block of Lavender Lane. That is near South WW White Road. Now, police say they found a license plate right near the victim's body, but the driver did take off after the incident. That investigation is ongoing. Arson investigators are working to find out what caused a fire at a Northside home. Firefighters responded to the call just before one this morning in the 200 block of Cliffwood. Crews say the house was abandoned, but there was evidence of squatters living there. Firefighters say the flames burned on the right side of the house and then spread to the attic. Crews say the fire started to spread to a house next door and ended up burning the neighbor's boat. Nobody was inside at the time. It is estimated to be about $70,000 to $80,000 in damage. That investigation is still ongoing. Well-med appointments at the Cisneros Senior Center started again this morning at 8 o'clock. Currently, health care workers on the front lines, those over the age of 65 and individuals of 18 to 64 years, of age with chronic health conditions are eligible to receive a COVID-19 vaccine at this time. You must make an appointment in order to receive a vaccine. Walk-ins are not accepted. You can schedule appointments right now by calling the number on your screen. That's 833-968-1745. In your morning headlines, new video shows this morning another angle of the chaos at the Capitol from a few weeks back. And an amazing story of two siblings who had no clue they worked together. <laughs> RJ Marcus is live in the studio with that story and more. How improbable Hi. is that, RJ? <laughs> uh, very improbable, but when you find the story and when you see the story, you'll see that it's actually like right under their nose. It's a pretty okay. incredible story there. But uh, first of all, guys, yeah, we're going to start with this uh, new video this morning that shows yet another angle of the attack and chaos at the U.S. Capitol building almost a month ago. And as you could see behind me, we have to... Uh, warn you this video is pretty violent and a little bit disturbing. Uh, the video is body camera footage that shows what DC Metro Police saw during the Capitol building breach on January 6th. 
As you can see right there, the video was released during a federal court hearing for a man charged in the deadly riot. It shows rioters grab police batons and use other weapons, even one using a hockey stick to make their way inside. They ended up breaking through a window there. Another person is heard yelling to knock off the mask of officers. Dozens of people have been arrested for their role in the riots and the investigation is still underway. Okay, guys, speaking of terrifying moments, a horrific carjacking at a car wash of all places was caught on camera, and now police are searching for the man responsible. A 63-year-old woman drove her van inside an automatic car wash in Colorado at around noon this past Thursday. You can see right there the carjacker just casually walks up to the van and violently attacks the woman and pulls her out of the driver's seat. Yeah, scary stuff there. She actually fights back until she's finally taken out of the car. Police said she did suffer minor injuries after the man bit her and grabbed her by the neck. Police are still looking for that individual and said her van unlocked automatically when she put it in park right as, right as the car wash started. So very scary moments there. Hopefully they find that individual and hopefully she is okay. Okay, guys, switching gears to some feel good news this morning. Two trauma nurses in Arizona received the biggest surprise of their lives while at work when they found out they are more than coworkers. They are, in fact, yes, family. Sandy Sandrick is her name, went looking for her brother, or, or she actually went looking for her birth father and found him on Facebook. But she also noticed a mutual friend who turned out to be her coworker, an individual named Alan Tucker. Well, they were working together and she asked Alan how she knew her birth father and he said it was in fact his dad. Very crazy. Both have been working side by side for two years without knowing they were brother and sister. I've always felt super comfortable with her and just like above and beyond how you would be with just a colleague. And how does someone tell you we have the same father and it just felt like, oh yeah, that's great. We're just taking it as it comes. We're enjoying it every day. And you know, I don't know what tomorrow brings except I know Alan's in my life and that makes my life better. That is unbelievable. So happy for those two. So Sandy has still not officially met her birth father, but says this new relationship with her brother is rock solid and both families have welcomed Sandy and Alan with open arms. Mark and Stephanie, pretty cool stuff. What Very cool. Chances. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And really, you know, you're getting to see a lot more of these stories because of social media. Mm -hmm. And then just to be able to see like, wait a minute, kind of put two and two together. I wonder what right. that moment was also like. I, I'm just now being told from the booth that uh, you guys are apparently second cousins. <laughs> Doubt it. So, you guys really talk. We're gonna have to look that. Yes. Yeah. Back at our <laughs> history. Facebook. Some mutual friends. Or Steph's like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, Thank probably. you, RJ. <laughs> Thanks, guys. 9:10 right now. 53 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at nine. A mail carrier is being praised by a family after her after she was quick to jump to action. Why the family is calling her their hero? That is still ahead. Uh, today's the beginning of Black History Month, and Texas Parks and Wildlife is uh, celebrating with virtual programs. What you could do to get involved still coming up in What's Up KSAT. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. We are here at Land Race, a new restaurant inside the new Thompson Hotel. Take a look at this breakfast of champions going on here. We're going to give you an inside look at Land Race right after the break. And taking a look at stocks this morning, we had the Dow up about 78 points. We'll be right back. You've probably heard of or seen the Thompson Hotel. It's a new luxury hotel being built downtown, and much of what to expect has been a bit of a mystery. This morning, we are getting an inside look at their new restaurant called Land Race. Our Max Massey joins us live, and Max, what can you tell us about this new Chickens restaurant? Chickens on a big one. Yes, good morning, guys. First and foremost, we are here with the executive chef, Chef Steve McHugh. Before we even get into the details, just I just want to show off what you guys got going on here. Can you can you give us a little bit of inside oh, info? Of course, yeah, we've got a lot of fun items. Uh, everything's centered around our big grill behind us, and so even our salads are grilled, our broccoli, our our crabs, fish, bone marrow. Uh, Chef Taylor's still still plating items for us, and uh, like I said, everything's centered around this big boy behind us. Now you guys don't open until February 18th. Yeah. The last eight months, take me through it. What are some of the obstacles that you guys have had to overcome? <laughs> Well, for a restaurant uh, restaurant operator as myself, it's been tricky. It's been tough. Um, you know, if we've learned anything these past uh, this past year is that people uh, they they want what they know, they want what they crave. Craveability is key, and simple food 
Uh, good ingredients cooked simply is, is really where it's at right now. Now our photographer, Robert Samaron, pointed out, he said, oh, they have a really cool wood fire grill. Can you take us through it? You had a great explanation earlier. Why is that so important for you guys? Well, food for me right now, especially, uh, like I said, after this past year, it's cooking at its most elemental. Uh, buying really good ingredients. We're, we're dealing with uh, a myriad of Texas producers. Um, I call it Texas terroir. And we're cooking it very simply over mesquite and post oak. So it's, it's taking food back to its most elemental. I think the last 10, 15 years, it's been all about uh, molecular gastronomy, trickery, uh, trying to find the most crazy ingredients we could get our hands on. And I think, like I said, people really want simple food cooked simply said that so eloquently before i let you go i just want to show off the food one more time what can people expect when they come here opens february 18th uh, we're going to have great service a beautiful space uh to work within uh, uh an amazing grill that's going to impart so much flavor into all these uh, wonderful ingredients and uh you know the, the same thing that, that that i've always done in my career just bring uh fun exciting food uh warm hospitality and uh like i said an amazing space Chef, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks for being here. All right, guys, we are far from done. We'll be back here around 9.30 a.m. We're going to check in with the general manager and the head of Mixology. Might be making up some cocktails. We'll see. Guys? All right, Max, we'll be standing by. Hopefully you don't eat all that food there, though. Yeah, it looked really good. Okay, <laughs> so I can't make up. any promises. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, honest answer. That's why we love you, Max. Thank yes. you. Uh, live down there at Land Race, uh, new restaurant inside one of San Antonio's newer hotels. It's amazing. How many new eateries are opening up even here almost one year into this pandemic? I, I know. They're, they're making it work, and I'm, I'm glad to see it. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Also glad to see the beginning of a new work week, new month, and uh, it's anybody's guess what the weather is going to be like for the next 30 days or so. Uh, February can be, bring a variety of weather, yeah. so we know February is going to be pretty wild. But this week looks good so far. We're going to see some nice temperatures. Before we jump into the forecast, I want to take you to space. Check this out. This is a live on Twitter, NASA is putting this out. They're doing a spacewalk right now. This is astronaut Victor Glover Jr. and astronaut Mike Hopkins. And they're completing a battery upgrade, installing some new cameras there on the uh, space station. Pretty cool. I love that we can broadcast that live and see it happening. Uh, very cool stuff. I think it's their second spacewalk so far of the year, so they've been pretty busy up there. Good stuff. All right, outside right now. Mostly blue skies. We've got a few thin high cirrus clouds there off in the distance. 51 degrees. North Italy winds at about 13 miles per hour, gusting to 23. So it has been a little breezy this morning. 40s for Bernie Stage Comfort, 45 there. 51 Tarpley, 52 in Hondo, 55 right now. Pleasanton in big picture here, 48 Gonzalez, 51 Kennedy. You're still sitting at 47 out there in Del Rio. We'll see these numbers warm up. Everyone's going to see a pretty mild day. It's not going to be warm. Uh, but mild with uh, dew points very, very low. Dew points are in the 30s for most of us, and that puts us in a very dry category. As far as the dew point is concerned, it'll be dry today and tomorrow, but then it jumps up, especially Wednesday and Thursday. Thursday, we could see temperatures top 80 degrees, so that is going to be our one really warm day, but then a front comes through, and we drop right back off on Friday, and this is that time of year where we would expect to see a series of fronts. We'll get a couple, it looks like, this week, maybe into the weekend. Big picture here across the state of Texas. It is clear. There are some of those thin high cirrus clouds working through time to time, but it's not a big deal. Uh, most of the cloud cover in action is all off to the east. So we've got a ridge over us. That's keeping things quiet, but you go to the east coast and there's big trough of low pressure and then a nor'easter that has developed. Very heavy snow for places like New York. Boston's going to get in on some of that, and this is causing issues there. And very gusty winds on top of the very heavy snow, and it looks like a really strong band is about to move through New York City. So the question is, is that causing travel delays? And the quick answer is no. Amazingly, all the airports are reporting no delays. Of course, not a lot of people are traveling these days either, so that could factor it. But uh, interesting that and not a lot of issues up there so far. Forecast for us. Shows that we'll just get some off and on cloudiness next couple days. Really quite a bit of sun. It's not until Thursday that, again, things start to change a little bit. Thursday is going to be that really warm day, as I mentioned. We'll get temperatures probably into the 80s in several spots. Then a front swings through. Unfortunately, this does not bring us any rain. It looks like this is going to be yet another dry front coming through. All the rain is going to be off to our north and east. And then that will cool things down on Friday. We really could use the rain, but it's just not there. Forecast for us today takes us up to about 66 
We'll get northerly winds. It says southerly well, there, there. It should say northerly winds, 10 to 15 and gusty. And then tonight, we will drop down into the 30s. 37 to start your Tuesday. 67 for Groundhog Day tomorrow. 74 Wednesday, 80 on Thursday, and then a little cooler Friday. We will put in a 10% chance of rain Friday, but I'm not optimistic at all. And it looks like we'll get another front uh, for the second half of the weekend, too, guys. Looking forward to Groundhog Day. <laughs> Should be nice. All right. Thanks, yeah. Justin. All right, right now it's 921, about 53 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, instead of wool, a German company found a way to make clothing out of sustainable material using dog hair. Yep, that's right, dog hair. See what this quirky fashion is all about, courtesy of Man's Best Friend. If you want to know about what shapes San Antonio, most of us go down to the Alamo or Institute for Texan Cultures. But a big piece of San Antonio history lies on the east side at the San Antonio African American Community Archive and Museum, or SACAM for short. With the help of everyday locals, the museum has tied San Antonio's African American descendants to the stories of Spaniards, Mexicans, Germans, and Canary Island populations who helped build this great city. We're taking these pieces, um, newspaper articles, historic maps, photographs, and kind of re-piecing or recreating or reconstructing. Um, it was turning out to be a tremendous African-American history that San Antonio has not given proper respect to. From famous musicians and soldiers to forgotten cemeteries and family trees, this rich history is right at your fingertips. In addition to the digital portion, SACAM is opening a new exhibit at La Viita this month. And your good news this Monday, Chicago USPS mail carrier being called a hero after she saved an elderly woman's life. Shonda Lemon knew something was wrong when she noticed the 89 year old had not picked up her mail in three days. So she called police for a wellness check and authorities entered Ellen Iwanski's home and found her lying on the floor. Police say she had been there for several days after falling. Iwanski's family says she was hospitalized for a week but is now recovering at a rehab facility. And check this out. Instead of wool, a German company found a way to make clothing out of dog hair. So with about 10 million pups living in Germany, there's plenty piling up in homes across the country. Now, owners actually get paid for their pet hair. Once collected, the hair is then spun into yarn in Italy. From there, it is shipped to fashion houses or back to the owners so they can knit their own hat or scarf from Fido's fur. Oh, my goodness. That is kind of quirky. Yeah, mm -hmm. I hope it's not like, what is it, 101 Dalmatians? I hope no one's getting that serious about it. Yes. <laughs> Uh-oh, yeah, okay. No, no coats. No, 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 no. no. 926, 54 degrees. <laughs> and coming up on GMSA at 9, you may have seen people post pictures of the COVID-19 vaccination cars, but the BBB says that makes you more susceptible to identity theft. Our Eric Hernandez will explain. That's still ahead in What's Up KSET. Started off as a good weekend for the Silver and Black before they fell short to the Grizzlies Saturday night. RJ's back with the break, after the break rather, with more on that and what to expect for tonight's game. And before we take that break, we want to take a live look outside the Alvida Cisneros Senior Center. As a reminder, you can call right now to schedule your COVID-19 vaccine. Walk-ins are not accepted, so the number is on your screen. It's 833-968-1745. For the silver and black. Spurs back on the court tonight after an up and down performance this weekend. RJ Marquez back in the studio to help break this down on another game day. Good morning again. Yeah, good morning, guys. This was uh, what I like to call good Spurs and bad Spurs because we basically saw some of the best parts of this team and then we uh, saw some of the worst parts. <laughs> <laughs> of this team over the span of two games. So let's get it going first here. Uh, Friday night, nice win here against the Denver Nuggets, one of the better teams in the Western Conference. DeMar DeRozan, uh, he has come up big for them in a lot of these games here. He finished with 30 points, 10 assists on Friday. You can see right there the Spurs close things out with a DeJounte dunk. Very nice, DeJounte. Uh, Spurs win this one 119 to 109. So at this point, 
You know what? This win, fourth place in the Western Conference. People feeling really good about this San Antonio team moving up. And everyone's like surprised, like, whoa, this first team's coming out of nowhere. Well, then Saturday happened. And uh, let's take it out <laughs> one here. I, you know, the thing is, too, is that I'm confused by all their home uh, outfits, as Stephanie likes to call them. <laughs> so here they go. They're rocking the white here, the classic Spurs jersey. Um, and it was not good from the start here. Memphis came out on top. So Memphis had not played like in two weeks. Uh, San Antonio, of course, this was the second night of a back-to-back, -back, and the Grizzly shot lights out. Good news here, Derek White made his return. He had been he had missed about a month, but uh, he wasn't even enough for the Spurs to win this game. Derek finished with 18 points and 22 minutes, and uh, he actually talked to the media after the game. He talked about uh, his uh, first action in more than a month. I feel like I haven't played in a while, um, so I just try to get my legs back underneath me and do whatever it takes to help us compete. It's going to be a game to game. Um, we got a lot of a lot of weapons. We're deep and. Um, and that's his job to put the, the right lineups out there and for us to compete when, we, when, get, when our name gets called. Yeah, so what uh, Derek was referring to there was sort of how the minutes are going to have to be parsed out here as we move ahead because with Derek White back, you're thinking maybe he's probably going to go into the starting lineup. Does that move Lonnie Walker back to the bench? And they've also had uh, really great results right now from their rookie, Devin Vassell, who's playing lights out as well. So Spurs have some decisions to make. Of course, though, there's a long season ahead, and uh, we got a long ways to go here. Uh, something funny about Derek is he's got a very sneaky uh, sense of humor, guys. I think the first question after uh, he came out was just like, well, how are you feeling? And he said something to the effect, well, my toe's not broken, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. there you go. So, uh, very dry sense of humor there uh, from Derek White, but good to see it and good to see that the Spurs are pretty much at full strength at this point. Now, they do play the Memphis Grizzlies again tonight at the AT&T Center. This is a division opponent, so these are always uh, pretty big games here for the Spurs as we uh, move ahead with the rest of the season. But... Remember, we were saying they were in fourth place in the West, and now they're all the way back in seventh or eighth. So it's going to be kind of a roller coaster ride here uh, for San Antonio as we move ahead. RJ, do you feel like the Spurs are, are getting comfy with some sort of starting lineup at this point? I, I actually think that's going to be the biggest question moving forward here because, I again, I don't think you could take away uh, Devin Vassell's minutes. I think he's been great. If anything, I think Lonnie's kind of been the most inconsistent guy. He's very streaky. Um, but as we saw in this first game with Derek back, they still decided to start Walker. So I think that's going to be sort of the biggest challenge here. And hopefully these guys can keep their spirits up because I think there are some minutes that are going to be going down for a few of these guys. Uh, a couple that you just cannot, I mean, Keldon Johnson probably needs to stay on, the, on the floor as much as possible. That dude is, uh, that guy's pretty incredible. So well, these, far. these back to backs do prove to be a test, especially with these, uh, these Western conference opponents. What do you expect tonight? Uh, I think, look, I, I would hope that the Spurs figure out what sort of went wrong on Saturday and uh, take care of business because, again, this is a division opponent here with Memphis, and uh, Spurs definitely don't want to lose out on any sort of tiebreakers when it comes to the Grizzlies. So go Spurs, go. Get a win. Definitely. Go Spurs, go. <laughs> I kind of got a, a left field question for uh -oh, you. Uh-oh, here we go. <laughs> and it has yeah. to do, do you think at this point, after having gone into the bubble last year mm -hmm. and now into this abbreviated season, do you think they've gotten used to the fact that there is no crowd at this point? Oh, yeah. That's really been that's really been sort of the tough part. And I think it's the crowd really helps when they come out really slow. I think for the most part, once they sort of get into the game flow, they're mostly locked in. But you could tell that there are times when the crowd can really help them. There's been a few games this year when I think the crowd would have been a big difference for them. They're doing the cardboard cutout thing. That thing is still sort of weird. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> and it's just weird to see an empty arena. And hopefully we can get the fans back in the seats pretty soon. All right. Okay. Well, they still have coaches yelling at them. That's true. So there's yeah. That. There's no shortage of that no. when it comes to power. RJ Marquez, thank you for the Thanks, wrap guys. on weekend sports. And again, of course, it is game day against the Grizz tonight, 730. Go Spurs, go. Thanks, RJ. Thanks, guys. Bye. Back. Outside with live cam back to Justin now and an update on the pollen counts. Yeah, let's get the latest count for you. Uh, Mold and Mountain Cedar both went down today. So that is fantastic news. Despite the fact we have some gusty northerly winds today, the numbers, Mountain Cedar is moderate. It's at 180. Mold's at 380 and low. Those numbers down just a little bit from the Sunday reading. And as we look at the graph here, 
you know, I, I don't want to say that we're coming out of mountain cedar season, but it, it kind of feels like it. The numbers have been trending downward. And as we get farther into February, that's typically what happens. So we may be through the worst of it, guys, and that's uh, fantastic news. Temperatures, 47 Comfort, 49 Bandera, 51 Tarpley, 52 Hondo, 55 down there in Pleasanton. Here in San Antonio, we're going to make it up to about 66 this afternoon. Sunny skies. Winds will be gusty from time to time, but not uh, overly windy. A nice day today and tomorrow. Some changes on Thursday, Friday. Uh, we'll get some uh, cooler air in here, especially by the end of the week. We'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. Guys. We are awaiting the February 18th opening of Land Race. That's a new restaurant and bar at the new Thompson Hotel. And that's located downtown and it's been an extravagant project years in the making. And part of that process is dealing with a pandemic. Max Massey joins us live from Land Race. Max, how's it uh, looking out there? How's it smelling? <laughs> Over there. Guys, this this has been phenomenal this morning. Smells great, looks amazing, so fresh, so clean. Joined here with Zach, though. Look at that, right on cue. Zach is the head of mixology here. So before we get into the economic impact and everything, tell us about a signature drink that you guys are making. Yeah, so sticking with Chef Steve, we're going with simple ingredients and just really elevating that. We've got a margarita made with pekin pepper, a Negroni infused with green tomato and black olive and uh, Tom Collins with a little bit of uh, raspberry and some fresh bee pollen. Like I said, guys, so fresh and so clean. So take a look at the awesome drink selection. Look at this. This is what has been really making my mouth water this morning. And that leads us right here to the general manager, Dwayne Collins. So Dwayne, what is the economic impact of the restaurant look like? Uh, the great part is that uh, our restaurant uh, was able to bring in uh, approximately uh, 75 new employees to add to the economy and the overall st stability of it. Uh, training doing that. We, we are managing the uh, social distancing, sanitizing of, of, of the entire staff, etc. Now, one of the, the things that we talked about earlier was doing all this during a pandemic. It's never easy to open a new restaurant. What were some of the challenges that you guys have had to deal with? I would say the challenges would be and are and, and continue to be is the, the economy is unstable. But the chef and the overall, we all decided to move forward anyway. And by doing that, our, our actions are going to inspire the, the entire area of San Antonio to uh, move forward and open up, even during the pandemic. But I will say, if you're going to do it, always, always use the, the proper precautions, sanitation, mask, distancing, et cetera. All right, Dwayne, thank you so much. One more shot of the food before we let you go. And guys, open six days a week. Big day, February 18th. We'll have much more coming up on the news at noon. Mark, Stephanie, I'll have some of this for you guys. I'll let you know how it tastes. Oh, I'm sure. I'm surprised it's still there, Max. <laughs> why, why does Me he too. always get these, Me too, these cushy assignments? <laughs> Max, how do you set all this up in so far in advance? <laughs> We're talking economic impact, Mark. It's much know. more than food. But did you tell the assignment desk, I want everything with food, just give it straight to me? That might be in there. I bitch my own ideas. I'm just saying. <laughs> well done. Max is looking out for number one. Amen, brother. Thank you, Max Thank Massey, you. live down at Thompson at uh, Land Race. Right now it is 940, 54 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And a warning from the BBB to the best places to buy lottery tickets in Texas. There's a lot trending on KSAT.com. Our Eric Hernandez joins us after the break for this week's What's Up KSAT. Several stories trending over the weekend on our website, including a warning from the Better Business Bureau. Our Erica Nethers joining us live now with the details on that story and much more. Good morning. Morning. Hey guys, good morning. Well, that BBB warning has to do with the vaccination cards you get after getting your COVID-19 vaccine. Some people are posting those on social media and the BBB says to stop doing so. According to the BBB, posting your vaccination card is making you more susceptible to identity theft or it could be helping scammers create false versions of your card. The card will have your full name, birth date and other information about where you received your vaccine, which is all valuable information that you'll want to keep private. Now, already in Great Britain, scammers were caught selling fake vaccination cards on eBay and TikTok. If you want to share the news about getting the vaccine, the vaccine BBB says to share your vaccine sticker or use a profile frame on Facebook. In other trendy news, today is the beginning of Black History Month and Texas Parks and Wildlife Department is celebrating with virtual programs 
There are 15 different programs to be streamed live on select days. The series will culminate in a live interactive Black History Trivia Challenge for the public on February 27th. The month-long online initiative encourages Texans of all ages to learn more about the contributions and achievements of African Americans in conservation, the great outdoors, and within our state and national parks. We have a list online now of all 15 programs and a link to a full calendar of those programs. And finally, if you love to play the lottery, then you need to check out this article. It's trending right now. Texas lottery data obtained by KSAT shows which stores in Bear County and the surrounding area sold the highest winning lottery tickets last year. Now, this data map includes stores in Bear, Comal, Kendall, Bandera, Medina, Atascosa, Wilson, and Guadalupe counties that sold tickets worth $600 or more. Records show that nearly 6,000 tickets either draw or scratch off met that threshold. One of the biggest winners won over $39 million last September at the Pick and Pack tent in Seguin. Also at the top of the list for draw tickets, the Circle K at 12602 Jones Maltzberger sold a winning Mega Millions tickets in August. We also have a chart that shows which games won the most money, and that one, guys, was Lotto Texas. And I can tell you right now, my grandma Alice is probably writing this all down. Checking out all the so maps. Visit all the maybe, <laughs> make her make her trip today to all those stores. Yeah, they're well, going to be busy, aren't they? Oh yeah, and this article is. I mean, you could tell people are really interested in this information because this article is probably the number one one right now on our really? webpage right now. I believe it. People love this stuff. Oh yeah. Now let's get to those national days of the week. Today is National Freedom Day and National Texas Day. Tomorrow is Tater Tot Day and Groundhog Day. Wednesday is Carrot Cake Day. Thursday is Homemade Soup Day. Friday is just for Justin, National Aww. Weather Person's Day. And my crew. And my crew. <laughs> Saturday is ice cream for breakfast day. And Sunday we end it with fettuccine Alfredo Day. So it's a good week. I mean, it's Justin, have your, you know, have yeah, some fettuccine, have some ice cream for breakfast. And then celebrate on Friday. <laughs> it's all for you. <laughs> Thanks, Thank, guys. Thank you, Erica. Thanks, Erica. Or I say Weather Person's Day, but I guess, uh, well, Justin would be really mad if we celebrated the groundhog on Friday as well. Yes, I mean, he gets his own day. You don't That's really true. want to be associated with that rodent. He's he's not usually right, I'll say that. Yeah, Mike said something that's like only 40% 40 40%? of the time. His, his rate is not good. No, okay. but he's cute. But he is cute. Right? <laughs> he is cute. We all love Groundhog Day. Yeah. Hey, take a look at this picture, guys. Uh, this is from the Renaissance Festival and uh, this weekend in Bernie. Uh, wow, Th those are some awesome costumes. You, you know, that's a mask for you right there, too. Great picture. We love them. We love uh, all the events going on across South Texas. If you want to send in your pictures, please do. You can send them in to KSAC Connect. Thank you. All right. Rainfall this year. We're at 1.02 for the year. That's well below average. Del Rio, look at that. 0.33. Austin at 1.75. So we're well below average. We, we need some rain. We know that. The drought is still here. Last year was bad. 2020 was not a good year for rain. And I... It just doesn't seem to want to get into the forecast. We've had a couple of events so far this winter, but not near enough. And we have another front headed our way Thursday into Friday, but it doesn't look like it's going to bring any rain. Right now, we've got clear skies and temperatures at 51 degrees at the airport, 51 Stinson, 53 Kelly, 49 Randolph, and northerly winds at about 13 miles per hour. The winds are going to be a little bit gusty from time to time, especially this morning. 50 Canyon Lake, 50 Comfort, 51 Bandera, 52 right now in Hondo, 51 down there at Stinson. And we've got 40s, Rock Springs down to Del Rio, 50s, and even still a few 40s there around uh, Victoria as well. So it's a chilly start, but temperatures will rapidly warm up today, eventually working into the 60s, mid to upper 60s this afternoon. There's a look at some of the wind gusts. We've had some gusts up above 20 miles per hour here in San Antonio. Dew points are low. It's going to be dry for a couple days, and then we'll see a huge ramp up as far as the dew points are concerned Wednesday into Thursday. Thursday is going to be a very warm day. We'll see the dew points get up close to 60 and we may see temperatures up close to 80 before our front comes through and uh, knocks the dew points back down and brings temperatures back down as well. We've got perfectly clear skies for Texas right now. There is really nothing there We're underneath the ridge of high pressure. So that's keeping things quiet for now. Big trough out east though and that is the big weather maker today. A ton of snow falling up there across New England and the Northeast. Very heavy rain moving through New York right now. They could see up to two feet of snow. It's blowing snow. It's not a great situation up there. So that, that'll be the, uh, the big weather maker, I think, across the country. To, well, for that area, but it will affect most of the country, probably travel a little bit too. And then as we look at temperatures, uh, 28 in New York City with snow falling there. The rest of the country, 
not all that cold. 30s, a few 20s, 27 up there in Chicago here in Texas. Uh, fairly mild, 30s, 40s, 50s for the most part. Here's what our forecast looks like going forward. Uh, quiet weather until about Thursday. Here comes our front. Swings through. Most of the rain is going to be off to our north and east. So uh, we just get the cooler air as we move into Friday. Probably some gusty winds too. 66 this afternoon. Winds 10 to 15 and gusty. And then coming up tomorrow, 67 for Groundhog Day. 74 Wednesday, 80 on Thursday. And then much cooler Friday, 62. A slight chance for shower and nicer for the weekend too. We'll be right back. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATDeals.com. This item is a game changer for everyone working at home. You can now enjoy your beverages warm from the first sip to the very last drop with this mug warmer. It's the electric smart mug warmer. The lightweight sleek cup warmer uses smart technology to keep your beverage at the temperature you choose. It has 18 watt heating element that keeps your beverage between 104 and 140 degrees at the temperature you choose. Now it's safe automatically turns off after one minute if it senses there is no weight on there. Spills will not short out the water resistant design. Comes in black or white. Manufacturer's 30 day warranty. And it can also be used for oatmeal, soups, beverages, and more. Now the retail price is $59. The case at deals price, $22.99. That's a 61% discount. You can find this deal and many others on caseatdeals.com. All right, we're at 55 degrees, up to 66 this afternoon, 67 tomorrow. A couple mild days. It'll be cold to start your Tuesday. Then we warm up Wednesday and Thursday before we get a couple cold fronts that bring us back down into the 60s and 50s. All right, a San Antonio woman has recently started trending on both BuzzFeed and TikTok thanks to her clever hack on how she makes something as simple as good old fashioned mashed potatoes. And of course you can find this article on kset.com. So yeah, so TikTok, thanks to her clever look, uh, how she's did it, uh, how she did that. So it's Jordan Park shared her mashed potato routine on TikTok back on December 30th and gave advice for people who prefer their skin on and off when making squishy potatoes. For skin on, Parks washes her potatoes and then rubs them down with avocado oil. Otherwise, she says, peel your potatoes normal before slicing them into smaller pieces before you boil them. And and here's where her trick comes in through. She only uses about a cup of water to boil the potatoes. The rest is chicken or beef stock, depending Boom. on what you're going to serve your mashed potatoes oh. with. There you go. And she says she adds a pinch of sea salt to the water broth mixture. Very good. So for the full rundown, uh, we have a link again on our website at kset.com. And before we leave you, we have some breaking Fiesta news. The Fiesta Commission has just announced this morning that Fiesta 2021 is being rescheduled. So the original dates, as we right. all know, typically mid-April. There's mm -hmm. going to be April 15th to 25th. They've just moved Fiesta this year, June 17th through the 27th. Which is interesting because last year it was canceled altogether. So we mm -hmm. will see what happens. Of course, we'll keep you posted. Have a great day, everybody. Bye, guys.